My name's Daniel Jones. My name's Rob Jones. I actually met Rob right before we were deployed to Iraq. When we first met, we just kind of hit it off real quick. It didn't take long to become best friends. We started calling each other the only team in the Marine Corps because we were, to a point, inseparable. If he had an idea to do something, I was going to do it. And if I had something, he was going to do it. I deployed to Afghanistan with 3rd Battalion, 7th Marine Corps Regiment on April 1st of 2010. And I spent that deployment doing IED detection and route clearance. And on July 22nd of 2010, they stepped on an IED and that resulted in double above knee amputations. We're always at the high risk of hitting that ID because we're the ones like in front of the tip of the space. When you're over there, it's not like in my mind, this huge, oh, I'm fighting for America. It's you're fighting for the guy with you. So we were in an area called Sangin in Helmand province. IED ridden, we're getting IDs, hits constantly. The environment was extremely kinetic. All of us guys were pushed out to different units. We're doing like a raid on the small village. We start taking contact. We hear an IED go off. Next thing you know, I'm in the air. Dust all around and I got blown up. Me and the few guys I was with, we take off. We start heading towards the uh, explosion. I actually had no idea it was, it was Dan Jones for the first five or 10 minutes. He was just completely like covered in uh, and blood. Am I gonna lose my leg, keep my leg, lose my left eye, keep my left eye? We're still taking incoming fire. We've got rockets, mortars, everything's coming at us. Next thing you know, we hear Rob coming in with uh, his guys. We weren't gonna say anything about Dan because you know we're still in the fight. Rob comes up, we're, we're kind of joking around, trying to keep everything light, and then he pushes out. Probably 30 minutes later, we heard another explosion. I woke up about 20 seconds after I stepped on the IED. I was, like you see in the movies, a lot of screaming, a lot of blood, people rushing over, putting tourniquets on you. Daniel was wounded about an hour, hour and a half before me. And so when I got wounded, he was already in a helicopter heading over to Camp Leatherneck. When I got wounded, they turned that helicopter around and came and got me. This Barak trip has been absolutely amazing. I think it's really important for people to support the Barak project. These are men and women who uh, have sacrificed on our behalf. Matt is the generous owner of Two Rivers Lodge. This is where we're staying. I'm also a Marine, served in the first Gulf War. He's just the type of guy, he's just so excited for you when you catch a fish. I had hooked a fish and I was reeling it in and he was just reminding me to, you know, keep that tip up, keep the tip up, keep, keep the, the damn tip, tip, up. tip up. When he hooked his first rainbow and brought it in, it was thrilling. That first time when you, you get that hit on, on your fly rod and you're pulling in that fish, it's a pretty incredible experience. It's just a great way for the guys to come together decompress, the stresses of the world don't even exist. One of the best parts about Bar-X is you take guys who deploy together, and that gives everybody the opportunity to really open up. I never laugh as hard any time in my life except when I'm with the guys that are here. It's funny because it almost it clicks and you're right back to where you were. It's almost like you've never left. The highlight for me was catching more fish than the other guys the first day. I'm not a very experienced fisherman, but apparently I'm very good at it. I backcast and hooked Daniel right at the chin. Unfortunately, I think I'm not gonna be living that one down anytime soon. I don't have a favorite moment of catching a fish. I didn't catch any. It's been phenomenal, man. Like, you get the opportunity to come to a beautiful place like this. Back home, I'm a firefighter, so I hear sirens and stuff all the time. I haven't heard a single siren out here. And to see the, the trees, the waterfalls, just sit out on the porch, drink a cup of coffee while you watch the river just run by. It's a very relaxing and, and surreal experience.
when you join the Marine Corps, you become part of a brotherhood. And so this is a great way to be able to maintain those relationships developed during the toughest moments of your life. If you're ever feeling down, you have these guys you can always lean on. They can relate better than anyone else can. They've gone through the combat, the war with you. And if we could get them back together so they can talk amongst themselves and, and realize that everything is okay, that's, that's huge. I don't know of any other organization that does this that targets groups of friends to bring them back together no matter where they are, how long they've been apart. And I think that's something special.